We're off. Moro Bay. Bye bye. What a beautiful spot. It's a cool spot. Yep. I wish we had a little bit more time to explore, but there's a big southerly headed our way. So we're going to try and make it into Santa Barbara before that southerly hits because it's the kind of southerly that brings four feet to Tahoe. So it's a lot of wind, a lot of moisture. And if we stay here, we're, we're here for another four or five days. So we're going to get going. 120 miles to Santa Barbara. Feeling better? Yeah. Yesterday I had pretty bad chills and a fever, but rested, had a lot of fluids and tea, and then today my throat hurts, but I don't have a fever, a little couple body aches, but it's not getting worse, so. All right. It's good. Yeah. And so we were off. Over the next couple days, we would motor, motor some more, and you guessed it, do some more motoring. We saw some not so beautiful and some oh so beautiful things as we made our way down the California coast. We even rounded the infamous Point Conception in about two knots of wind. <laughs> and as we made our way into Santa Barbara, the next low pressure front was hot on our heels chasing us in. And while the scenery looked like things were supposed to be warming up, for the next few days, we would sit tied up to the dock, waiting out torrential downpour. All right, we, uh, we haven't filmed a lot in the last few days. Um, but we did get some beautiful dolphins on the way down and we've had a uh, really, really rainy few days in Santa Barbara. Um, but that's the last low for a little bit. So we are headed out to the Channel Islands and yeah, we're gonna go check out an anchorage, try and find the Painted Cave. I think you said it's like the second biggest cave in the world or something like that, that you could go in with a boat. Something like that. So um, yeah, and also Sharky, Sharky, who skipped out on the first part of the sail because we thought it might be really nasty weather the whole time. <laughs> like zero knots of wind for 40 hours of motoring. Um, got driven down by her friend and she's back on board. So the whole family's back together. And there's finally a little bit of wind. So we have the head sail out. We have like nine knots and we're gonna get the main out and see if we can turn the engine off. It'd be cool. But even if we can't, motor sailing's better than just straight up motoring. We just wanted to take a quick moment to let y'all know that our course dates for next season are now posted on our website. These trips start in October 2023 and run all winter until May of 2024. They range in time, location, distance, and crew, but all these details can be found on our website at cruisersacademy.com. So check them out and come sailing with us on Lantica and Sea Cortez. Look at this new spot. Oh man, the new Dodger just keeps on giving back. Thought this canvas crushed it. Yeah, so we have a sunroom now. It feels so nice out of the wind, but the sun is blasting on me and I have a perfect view of the sails. Now if I just control the autopilot for my watch, we're good. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a little bit since Sharky has been out on the open ocean, though. She's funny, she like loves being right up at the bow and uh, kind of looking at everything. that can hold their breath too long, so she's in a bit of a play mode, <laughs> to say the least. She needs to be desensitized to water dogs. Yeah. The dolphins, for sure. Look at her. She's on high alert. She's got herself all stuck in the sheet. Good girl. Good girl, Shark. She looks happy. Yeah. <laughs> What's 
good depth here? 18 feet. Okay, and the dinghy's all good? After the last couple weeks of ridiculous rain and zero wind, I can't tell you how good the sun felt on our skin as we made it out to the Channel Islands. This chain of eight islands sitting 20 miles off the coast of Southern California runs about 160 miles end to end. While Catalina Island is the only one with a civilian settlement today, these islands were inhabited as early as 13,000 years ago, which is actually the earliest paleontological evidence of humans in North America. In 1959, a couple of archaeologists were out in these islands searching for pygmy mammoth bones. Yes, I said pygmy mammoth. When they found a human femur sticking out of the canyon wall on Santa Rosa Island. At the time, they didn't have the technology to tell how old it was. And it wasn't until the 1990s when a couple more archaeologists used a radiocarbon dating test, which determined this femur was the oldest to have ever been found in North America. Of course, this opened up all kinds of questions about how our continent was originally colonized. But it does lend credence to a coastal migration theory that claims the people of Siberia and Alaska used boats to travel south. Between then and now, the islands have been inhabited by the Chumash tribes, loosely belonged to Mexico at one point, acted as a hideout for smugglers, served as a base for hunters and whalers was home to a sheep and cattle ranch in the mid-1800s, and finally gained protection as a national park around 1980. Today, they're an empty and serene oasis for cruisers and divers, and we are really excited to explore their shores. You guys ready for a dinghy mish? Let's do it. Let's cool. do it. Sunshine, sharky, dinghy. Shark, we're gonna go in a cave, okay? Uh, I feel like I'm on a different planet, kind of. <laughs> really cool. Just the light and this weird crevasse that goes back to a big cave in the back of the pit channel! Water maker on the island. Nope. Yeah. Ah, oh! Sharky! Ah, claws! Spot! Absolutely not. 
<laughs> Did you see that? Watch yeah. this one. Watch this one. Listen to that noise coming out of there. What is that? Becca, Becca, Becca. <laughs> what is that? Probably air escaping from vents. Maybe. There's like a howl coming out of the back of the cave. Yeah. That's probably air, right? I feel like this is where the Goonies or some movie set. And why is this cave not more known? Like, why is it not like a world famous cave? Maybe it is. Maybe it is. We this just don't know. So, we're so crazy. Right Look now. at the water coming down. Wow. Hey, look, it goes way. Pretty freaking incredible. I've always heard a lot about the Channel Islands, but to be here, even in the winter, wearing shorts and sandals, yeah, is very sandals. nice. <laughs> We're 300 miles south from the bay, and it's already getting into my kind of weather. Yeah. So by the time we get to Mexico, it's just underwear. <laughs> Lonely. Feels so good to be cruising again. Yep. Whoa, that's freaking cool. That's a cool thing you landing in a cave. <laughs> this is cool. Oh, look at the freaking shot out of the yeah. peak. I know I should have brought my camera. It's road shot. Oh yeah. That's definitely gotta be one of the cooler dinghy landings we've done. Straight into a cave. And then the cave opens up on this other side. That's cool. How's your time been on Lantica so far? Incredibly, incredibly amazing. Good. Yeah, can't put it in words. How long have you been on board now? What, uh, a week and a half? A week and a half? About 10 days, right? It feels like 30 days. <laughs> <laughs> in a good way? In a really good way, yeah, yeah. Yeah, more than I imagined, that's for sure. Cool. How's the drill flight going? It's so pretty. Like, the, uh, the water is pretty... Clear, like the visibility around here is pretty good, but because there's breaking waves in the shallow area, it's like this teal turned up water and then it goes deeper right where we anchored. So the contrast between the two colors is really pretty. I'm doing a little Lantica photo shoot right now. It's looking like a babe. And there's like kelp floating in the water around her and stuff. It's really cool. The next morning, we are off again. And after dropping Chris off in Santa Barbara, we pointed Lantica south towards Catalina. Hello, Ramona. I can't shake the simplest feeling beyond the ghost. We stand on the opposite shore. Hello, Ramona. I reach through mysterious ceilings, my only hope. I look for the things I don't know For all in this I stand alone Show me where the ending goes Honest, honestly I should be the last to know All in this I stand alone Show me where the ending goes Honest, honestly I should be the last to know Look at that Sunrise 
It's actually been a while since I've done any sort of video vlog like this. <laughs> I don't film myself very often, but something about being out here on night watch and the sun coming up feels almost natural to pick up the camera and start filming something. It's been a pretty trying couple weeks since we left San Francisco. Um, not because we hit big weather or things are breaking, it's more just like mental stress of uh, getting back into the cruising life, which isn't all sunshine and rainbows, this is actually really, really difficult. Um, and also trying to run the business as well. Cruises Academy doing offshore sailing. Um, there's a lot more responsibility on us to make sure that the people that join us, the students we have, really, really get an incredible time out of it and learn from it um, and just get what they want out of the, out of our experience together. And unfortunately, we've been motoring a lot. We put the sails up maybe twice since we left San Francisco. I've never seen wind over 10 knots in over 400 miles down the coast, um, which isn't a big deal. It's just frustrating when you want to teach offshore tactics for sailing and stuff. But it's like also a great learning experience because that's what cruising is. You live by the weather. And you have to adapt to whatever's coming at you, so you can't just magically have wind if you want. But all in all, the ups and downs. We're on our way south, so I am gonna start shedding layers here soon in the next couple weeks, which I'm very excited about. And I feel like cruising is about to start right now. So let's watch the sunrise. We've got Catalina Island right behind us. That's where we're headed now. Gonna do some diving and some time underwater in the kelp forest will probably be pretty good for us. Overnight passage, just the two of us? Gosh. Is that, is that true? That's how crazy yeah. it is to think about we've been sailing together for four years, five years. How long? I don't know, all in all, probably five, yeah. Five four years. or five, yeah. And we've never done an, an uh, overnight passage, just the two of us. I know, we always like having people around with us, but. But I guess we did it with Shark Dome. Yeah, Sharky, come. Sharky, come. Sharky, come. Good oh, girl. So Sharky just completed her first overnight passage. She did really good. She was a, a little confused at times, but she finally settled down and laid down in bed and kind of got some sleep. So, um, but the craziest thing happened last night. We had dolphins for over six hours with us, which to put that into perspective, the longest I've ever seen dolphins stay with the boat before that was one time in Antigua, we had dolphins for almost an hour, and I remember my mind was blown. So they were just hunting off the side of the boat, and we put a spotlight in the water. I was trying to film them, but they scattered. There's all these really tiny little fish in the water, so it was pretty crazy. So Sharky definitely got desensitized to dolphins last night, I think. <laughs> all right, let's go pick up a morning. Let's do it. Thank you so much to everyone who has been watching these episodes. We know they aren't coming out on a regular schedule, but we really appreciate you all tuning in and we hope you enjoy the effort we put into them. If you do, please consider heading over to our Patreon and joining to support us making more films like this one. Or just leave a comment below and be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications for future episodes. Next time, we'll share how the Pacific Coast of Baja blew us away on our 16-day sail down to the tip of the peninsula and into the Sea of Cortez. Much love to you all and catch you next time.